Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. So whilst we are still getting warm up with a uh, with a bone info note, uh, let's continue and take a look at what we can do more with the bone info nodes. So the idea is to turn to quickly turn motion capture data into a mesh, right? So let's do that again. You should be getting more familiar with this process. So I'm gonna quickly go to my desktop and let's find the BVH data. Let's pick one that's kind of interesting. Uh, Capoeira, okay, cool. Let's pick that one. Import BVH and we have our animation here. So a guy did a kick, Capoeira kick, very cool. Um, we can save this real quick file save as bvh kick now we're gonna start with a um, stretch of generated mesh I'm gonna have like a line mk2 we know that uh, y is the axis of the bone so I'm gonna make it y and I know I'm gonna need to center the line so I'm gonna turn that on Bmesh viewer and plug this guy in. So this is gonna be our kind of like a instance object. Be careful with the naming here. This is the, this is called alpha. Later on, uh, along the uh, along the line, you shouldn't use the same name. So we have this line in the center being generated on the fly, and then now we're gonna switch to animation nodes and we're gonna create bone info nodes uh, let's turn off this just in case it's slowing down because I'm recording as well so let's pick up our armature and we're gonna instant some line objects uh, so let's do that real quick instant object let's grab our line object and how many lines we're gonna generate depending on how many matrices transform which is based on the, the bones of this character and I think I'm gonna turn on all this this is actually the center of the bones uh, okay so that's why we want to center the line so the next thing we want to do is to use object transform output so for the location, it's going to be the center of the bone, which is this guy right here. Um, actually, I'm going to use the loop. Instead of plugging in like multiple objects and kind of work a vectorized way that way, I want to use just a loop to do this. So tap W, loop through objects. Because I know that loop is uh, more like uh, fully supported, while vectorized is not always supported. So we're gonna need a bunch of value coming in. So this is gonna be the centers. The centers of each bones can go into this guy. Okay, so we can see the line is being generated for every center of the bones, which is pretty cool. We're gonna find the use of it soon. Direction is actually a vector as well. Direction. Direction is a vector. This one actually goes into the Euler, the, the rotations of each line. So hopefully this kind of works perfectly for us. I think uh, this one I'm still, I'm just kind of guessing, okay, I think it's Y. And this one is X or Z, doesn't matter. For now, doesn't matter. The scale itself is what more important. We can get the scale, it's the length of the bone right here. Um, the creator of this node, um, Squir Squirrel Skull, uh, he, he thought about all this and I'm really glad that he really add what's important for this, so I have to thank him again. So this is gonna be the scaling. The scaling that matters is the Y, remember? So be careful with that. Um, float goes in here. So instead of going to the all the value, really we want to use a combined vector 
float value goes into the y this one one and one this goes in there and we are sh we should be good here this is the length so really the this is the setup you need um, I'll name this armature to mesh sort of uh, yeah of course you can sort of generate this for completely inside animation nodes probably I will do that in the next live noting you can also completely do this inside sphere chop I like uh, both okay I, I use both so so you will see I do this all the time this armature now uh, we don't need to see the armature now we can just hide it so go to outliner armature hide it so we have this line and each line is the repre uh, representation of the bone we probably have uh, extra line down there because we have extra bone um, doesn't matter um, the next thing we want to do is probably hide the, this uh, all these uh, dotted lines select the object instancer tap U hide relationship lines so we have this capoeira guy as a stick figure and each stick each line is a is a completely different object, but we can merge it inside Sphere Chalk. Save this again. So let's uh, actually I want to do grouping as well here. Group operations. Um, I'm gonna group one objects. Select it here. Plug this in there, and we are good. Every object is now under the same group. Now let's switch to Sphere Chalk and objects in select our group and get selections this is all the alpha objects viewer B mesh here oh you can actually use viewer B mesh or um, or you can use curve as well I like using curve as well B mesh um, what is it polyline viewer so I have lots of nodes I kind of memorize but if I forget I, I can always sh shift A and then search um, so we have a bunch of lines you can actually uh, conveniently merge everything here instead of multi you can turn it into single so if you plug the vertices and yeah actually just the vertices will kind of work I might be wrong oh yeah I'm wrong I need to just apply matrix. Now we have a proper stick figure. And there seems to be like a slight delay kind of processing, but it's not, not actually like a delay. I think it's still working pretty fine. Um, yeah, I think I tested and it's not, you can see the delay there, but in reality if you render it out I think it should be fine so yeah this is generated on the fly remember so you can always change your motion capture data and then make adjustment to this it's very nice um, I found uh, you can control the radius the twist radius you can randomize of course if you like randomize input um, currently each and every single object here is actually uh, just like two points you can always use factorize vector interpolation and in here you can let's see use range float between 0 and 1 plug into this guy as a result you have this uh, higher resolution per bone and the next thing you can do you can randomize input vertices per per line object so this is always kind of nicer well not too random just a little bit it's like a, just a quick um, quick and easy way to do this of course you want to make um, this like a bit nicer this measure sometimes uh, this is kind of enough but you know 
depends what on what you're doing so this guy is around 50 frames only for the kick yeah so yeah I think that's uh, actually pretty much it that I want to show you you can turn on beast line beast line will make the line smoother but it's gonna drop it's gonna become shorter sometimes uh, so you need to probably add more count and yeah if you wanna further randomize you know 20 20 per 20 samples per line 20 here float plug this into the radius oh very small there so you get this kind of a mummy looking creatures this is like a super lazy way to generate a character but you know you got a lot of uh, motion capture data available online or you can if you have access to motion capture um, recorder you're lucky you can make your own mocap and make some kind of animation like this because you know um, this guy is becoming because this is like a single object you can also do a little bit more maybe I'll try let's try a um, smoke simulation and let's see if my computer gonna crash because it's very old um, a quick trick viewer be mesh and from this guy to that guy you can use um, out mk2 plug this guy in there turn off this guy turn off the renderer vertices in there polygon informations in there so we have this guy reduce the subdivision and I think we are we are good and just type spacebar and then quick smoke and let's see how this works for us because this guy is a mesh now mesh data can emit smoke particles whatever this should be pretty good for us looks like the animation stops no I think it's still animating cool so smoke doesn't look like smoke maybe smoke is too dark maybe I need light point light texture solid material no still too dark what's here uh, the smoke I almost forgot how to do smoke smoke color white blue maybe fire do we have fire what's the flow here so flow is the mesh smoke color white smoke flow advance smoke and fire okay let's make it fire There we go. Bunch of mesh emitting fire. This is a mocap data. Um, this box can can be like an open thing. So if I'm not wrong, there is one. Okay, adaptive domain. So that's cool and efficient. Make it small because this I'm recording as well. So it's gonna be slow. If I maximize this it's gonna be a little bit faster can't see the simulation somehow go back to this 32 smoke color we don't have smoke anymore ah there we go so yeah fireman uh, capoeira kick and it's super slow I should probably bake this and make it fire a little bit better but you see the interactivity it's a uh, I, I like seeing that maybe I'm maybe I, I really should make like a should work more on like a game engine like a unity that's probably my next thing to study and to experiment with um, yeah but anyhow this is how um, you can kind of process the motion capture data from 
from zero, from nothing, um, bring it into Blender, process it with stretch of animation nodes, and then you can produce uh, this meshing that's actually live and real time and interactive. And you're, if you're an animator, you're an artist, you, you will like this kind of method. I think it's very, very basic. Um, yeah, the whole setup is pretty streamlined. So I'm pretty happy with this setup. Uh, maybe I should just send this plan for you guys to study. And thanks again for tuning in. Um, if you have any question, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.